About halfway between the North Carolina cities of Fayetteville and Wilmington sits a small oval-shaped lake. Called White Lake, it's a popular vacation spot for North Carolinians, surrounded by hotels, summer camps, water parks, and second homes. In that sense, it's not too different from many lakes around the country. Four miles away sits Baytree Lake, an even larger oval-shaped lake. Horsepen Bay sits not far away from that, a smaller lake shaped like an oval as well. A few more miles from that sit several more small oval-shaped lakes. Singletary Lake, Jones Lake, Salters Lake, to name just a few. There's something strange about these lakes though. Each one of them are shaped pretty much like an oval, with different sizes but essentially the same proportions. And even more unusually, each of the ovals are pointing in the same direction. It's not just lakes though. Look more closely and you'll see that the entire area around White Lake, North Carolina is filled with these strange oval shapes. Some are forests, some swamps, some are oval shaped sections of farmland. Sometimes their outlines are roads, sometimes canals or aqueducts, sometimes they're simply changes in the color of the soil. But regardless, they are everywhere, and once you've noticed them, you won't be able to unsee them. These oval shaped depressions in the land, each facing from northwest to southeast, aren't unique to the area around White Lake. You can find them all around the coastal plains of North and South Carolina. I just chose this particular area by zooming into a random part of the state. While they're most prominent in the Carolinas, where they got their name from, they can actually be found all the way from New Jersey to Florida. And the strangest part? No one is quite sure what caused them. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host Carter. Today, I'll take you through the strange oval-shaped depressions called the Carolina Bays, and a few theories on how they formed. This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. What do you do right when you wake up in the morning? I typically scroll aimlessly through social media, check my email, or read the news. But it's directionless, and I sometimes feel like I'm wasting time. I wanted to find a way to use those few minutes while I'm still waking up to do something more productive. Since I signed up for Morning Brew, I've found just that. Morning Brew is a daily newsletter that delivers top news straight to your inbox. It's interesting, relevant, easy to read, and focuses on everything that's happening in the world of business, finance, tech, and more. If you're an ambitious professional looking for a quick and easy way to stay informed, Morning Brew is the newsletter you should read when you wake up. The sign-up process is so easy, it'll maybe take you 15 seconds at most, and it's entirely free. Sign up for free by using morningbrewdaily.com interesting. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. There are half a million of these oval-shaped divots in the landscape along the country's eastern seaboard. Initially, a popular theory was that they were formed from a meteor shower striking the Earth. After all, the Carolina Bays were all pointing the same direction, southeast, which gave credence to the idea of some type of impact causing the depressions. But a meteor shower doesn't make much sense. After all, meteor craters are usually roughly circular. Every single one of the Carolina Bays is an oval. On top of that, what kind of meteor leaves craters that are so shallow? Impact craters are often hundreds of feet deep and leave huge rim walls that rise up from the edges. If you didn't know any better, you'd think you're in a valley surrounded by mountains, not a crater. The Carolina Bays, however, are usually no more than 10 feet deep. The deepest is only 45 feet. Instead of a mountainous rim, they're usually marked by a relatively thin deposit of sand. On top of that, meteor impacts are pretty strong. Why can't we find similar indentations in the landscape closer to the mountains? Why are they only on the coastal plain? And why aren't any remnants of the meteors themselves still there in any of the bays? This gives way to another theory. If a meteor shower didn't create the Carolina Bays, how can we explain the fact that they're all pointing the same direction? One theory argues that they aren't all facing the same direction after all, but that instead each bay is oriented slightly differently, and that if the lines are drawn from one end to the other, they all meet in a spot near the city of Saginaw, Michigan. They claim that basins in a similar but less prominent phenomenon in Nebraska known as rainwater basins also point to Saginaw. If a meteor struck there, the Carolina Bays as well as the rainwater basins in Nebraska could have been formed from debris flung up from the impact, striking the soil far away. But there's no crater at all to be found in Saginaw, so how could it have worked? Proponents of this theory claim that a meteor strike occurred when much of the region was covered by an ice sheet, which blocked the meteor from reaching the soil. Instead, they claim that the impact sent ice into the air, 
which had mostly melted by the time it struck the Earth. It was such a light impact that it only left marks in soft coastal soil, as well as clay in Nebraska. The ice then melted, leaving behind many of the lakes that are there today. At first glance, it's an intriguing theory, but most geologists have rejected it for a pretty simple reason that would seem to rule out the possibility of the Carolina Bays being caused by an impact of any kind. See, for an impact theory, whether a meteor shower or ice being flung from a faraway strike to be true, you'd have to ignore a key fact about the Carolina Bays. Scientists have used radiocarbon dating and other forms of dating to get estimates of when the Carolina Bays were created. What they found is that the Carolina Bays were not created at the same time. Some are 15,000 years old, others more than 100,000 years. That's a huge range, and if an impact theory were correct, each of the Carolina Bays would have been created at the same time. On top of that, there's no sign at all that the soil and sand in the bays have undergone any sort of disturbance at all, much less something that would cause a crater. This brings us to the most popular theory behind their creation, what geologists generally believe is how they were formed. It's simple and certainly not as exciting as the idea of a meteor hitting a glacier, but it's the only theory that accounts for all the questions behind the bays. The theory is that the Carolina Bays, as many of them are today, are just ancient lakes and ponds, but not any types of lakes. Come with me to the northern tip of Alaska and you'll see something eerily similar. Oval-shaped basins, this time all of them lakes, all along Alaska's Arctic coastal plain and all facing the same direction. These are called thermokarst lakes. You can find them all over flat coastal areas in the Arctic. Much of the soil in the Arctic is frozen solid, called permafrost. When it thaws and melts, it leaves little lakes dotting the landscape everywhere. The oval shape and the fact that they all face the same direction is thanks to wind. If wind patterns in a region often face the same direction, water in the lakes will push in that direction and erode away one specific shoreline, leaving deposits of sediment there. These thermokarst lakes are usually in flat coastal plains with soft soil, and so it's common for them to get these oval shapes whereas other lakes will not. Though there's no way to prove definitively that the Carolina Bays were once thermokarst lakes like the ones across Alaska and Siberia, the concept checks out. North America was once cold and heavily glaciated, and the Atlantic coastal plain could have feasibly once been permafrost. Once temperatures rose, the lakes would have still been there, and continued moving with the wind into these oval shapes. In fact, the sandy rims of the bays are always taller on their southeastern edge, meaning that's where the sand was primarily deposited. From what we know about wind patterns in the region at the time the basins were being created, wind was primarily blowing towards the southeast. While this theory is generally thought to be the most likely explanation, there's still no consensus on how the Carolina Bays were formed. Which theory do you believe, or do you think there's another explanation for their formation? Leave a comment below and let me know. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's already joined my Patreon. Through it you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad free content, and shoutouts to my videos. Please be sure to check out the TII store, where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official, that is interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks, laptop stickers and sleeves, and so on. I really appreciate the over 800 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information and suggestions for future videos. It's a great community and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.